Hello and welcome to part two of my guide to getting started with multi-platform arcade game designer. In the first part I showed you how to get some basic sprites and blocks together, um, put them together into screen and get the sprites interacting with each other. In this part I'm going to show you how to add some more screens and get them uh, working together in a map uh, and also to deal with one or two of the other uh, problems that that will create. Um, so let's make a start on that now. So let's go down to the um, screens editor. First of all, now this is the screen we set up last time. So uh, what we need to do is make it um, a start screen for a little map. So let's just have a, a two screen map to start off with. So we'll um, block off um, one of the walls so that the only exit is to the right. Then we need another um, screen creating. Now we can create another screen by using the X key or pressing insert. Um, I'll show you there is a help facility for all of the editors uh, which I haven't shown before. Um, this will show you the, the keyboard shortcuts uh, for all of the editors. So as I said, uh, insert or X will create a new screen, delete will delete the current screen, the cases will select the screen uh, and one and two will select the block but you can also do that with the mouse of course. Um, so we create a new screen and then we start to draw some blocks on that. Something pretty rudimentary to begin with. And so let's see. Oops. That was uh, 13 blocks down, so we need to put a platform in 13 blocks down. Let's put in another block here, make it look a little more interesting. Okay, so now we have two screens, the one on the left, our original one, which is now modified, and one to the right of it. Uh, so we now need to link these two screens together. And the way we do that is by going to the map editor and there we see the map and it's not terribly big at the moment just the one screen there the start screen screen zero you'll notice the asterisk there that's just to denote that that screen is the start screen if we put a screen to the right of it which is the one that we've just put in there with the um, mouse with the click of the mouse buttons uh, left and right will um, change the screen number you see that goes in there and we now have two screens zero and one and zero being the start screen now if I press space the last screen I edited will become the new start screen so we could start the player off there however I don't think we'll do that we're moving back to screen zero just for now um, so the next thing to do is to go down to the sprite positions and on our new screen we'll need some more sprites so first of all we need to put in a player respawn point now note that I click the player sprite and it set up a new player sprite in the top left um, and it defaulted to player respawn that's because we've used that sprite before that sprite image before um, with as a player respawn point so we'll just move that there and that's the position where the player will restart if he dies on this screen in future. Now we'll select this cross sprite. Now that's put a cross sprite in the top left corner but it's also defaulted it to sprite type 2. Again that's because we've used this cross sprite before uh, on the previous screen and it was used for sprite type 2 so it's defaulted to the same sprite type um, just to save a little bit of time. So let's move that there. So now we have a player respawn point there and a bouncing alien nasty sprite there. And on the first screen, the player starts there. We have a nasty sprite there and a collectible. Now we can export this and see what that does. Create the assembly listing. Now 
Note I'm using clear 24575. When clearing memory for um, uh, machine code on the spectrum, you need to go one below the start address. As the start address is 24576 on the spectrum, we clear 24574, just to clear that up. Um, load the binary data. temp.bin, that was the binary that was created when we exported the code. So now we put in the start address, 24576, as it is on the spectrum. OK, and now our game's in memory. So there we go, there's the menu again. We press 1 to start, and here we are, shooting the nasty sprite, moving on to the next screen, and shooting that nasty sprite. Again, if we die on this screen, we go back to the spawn point. If we die on this screen, we go back to that spawn point. So it is important to always set up a spawn point on every screen. Now, we do have one additional problem that this has created for us, and that is this collectible sprite. Because we've used a sprite, the sprites are always regenerated whenever you move onto a screen. So if we pick up that collectible now, we come off the screen, and then go back onto it again, lo and behold, we've picked it up, but there's another collectible for us. Well, that's not what we want, is it? So, that's a problem. There is, however, a way around that, and I'll show you how to um, sort that out now. And that's by using objects, not sprites. Now, objects are not respawned when you enter a screen. So if I just reset that, I'll show you how to set up an object now. So we go down to the Objects Editor and we need to create a new power-up image. So let's do the image for the object as a little sort of hexagonal thing. Shall we? We won't spend too much time working on this. Oops, I think I've gone too far there. Okay, and then, I don't know, let's just put a little cross in the middle so that Everyone knows it's a bonus, a little plus sign. OK, so that's object zero. You can see in that panel. Underneath that, that is carrying. Now, that's the object's status at the start of the game. So at present, this object um, begins the game in the player's inventory. But that's not what we want. We want the object to uh, start the game on screen zero, where it's subsequently collected by the player. So we change the start screen to room zero with the uh, up and down cursor keys, and then we can press P to position the object on that screen. So let's put it where the sprite currently is on that sprite. Press enter. And we go back to the screen, uh, the sprite position editor, and we just click on the sprite, and then we just press delete to delete that sprite. So that sprite is no longer there, but in its place we have an object. However, we now have to write the code to um, deal with um, the player picking up that sprite. So what we need to do is go into the events and look at the player sprite. Now, first things first, we need to detect whether or not the player has collided with an object. So we do that with the detect obj command. What that does is it looks to see if the present sprite, in this case the player, is adjacent to any object. And if it is, it puts the object number into a global variable, Oops. obj, obj. So um, we then examine that variable. Now, object number was zero. So let's test to see if object zero is detected. If it is, we need to get the object. So we get 
OBJ, which is the um, number of the object that we picked up. We could have just could just write that, but um, it's probably better practice to write get obj. So that would get the object. However, that isn't enough. We now need to spawn the satellite sprite that revolves around the player. So what we'll do is we'll put in some code to spawn the player, uh, spawn the sprite. Uh, now I think it was sprite one, wasn't it? Sprite type one was the satellite sprite, and sprite image one was the little circle. Um, now, whenever we spawn a sprite, if we want to change any of the defaults, we always put in a spawned clause, uh, followed by an end sprite. Now, spawns then selects that spawned sprite, and then any code we write here will refer to that sprite and not to the player sprite. End sprite means, OK, I've done writing code for the spawned sprite, I'm now writing code for the original player sprite in this event. So that's what that's there for. Now, one other thing we need to do is check what the original code was doing when the um, sprite type 1, the original satellite sprite, was collected. So let's see what that was doing. Now that was looking, let's have a look, here we go. Now that was checking for a collision with the player. Well, we've, we've done that in the player event code now. Um, but what it was doing was it was setting the direction to 1 and the variable z to 1. So those are just lines that the script generator um, needed to put in there to get the thing working. So we're going to need those lines in our new block of code. So we copy those and then we go back to the player event and in the spawned sprite section we just paste them in and we just save that. So that should now take care of spawning the sprite for us. So let's export the source code there. And we'll export it to temp. Let's change that to lowercase again. Create the assembler listing. And now let's load the binary. dot bin that's the start address and then run it there's the menu again and now you see we have the object there instead of the sprite and if we pick up the object lo and behold it spawns us our sprite our sprite moves on to us with the to the next screen with us and if we move back again, you'll notice that we can no longer pick up the collectible. So we've picked up the collectible and we can't pick it up a second time. So that's how we use objects.